I have not purchased a webcam in over a decade. And I mean, why would I? I have an iPhone that I can use for my webcam. I have my built-in Mac camera that I can use. Why bother with a standalone webcam? Those were the exact thoughts that went through my head about two years ago when I first heard about Insta360's Link webcam. I did not understand the hype. But now that Insta360 has launched the Link 2 and the Link 2C, which I have right here, they are much improved over the originals. And that compelled me enough to say yes to partner with them to bring you this video and tell you why you need a webcam in 2024. I never thought I'd say those words, but you do because this thing is awesome. So let me start by addressing the differences between the Link 2 and the Link 2C. And this is very simple. They're the exact same except for the Link 2C just does not have the gimbal. So the Link 2 has the gimbal that moves around. It can track you all around, up and down, side to side. The Link 2C does not. That's it. They have the same video quality, same audio quality, and pretty much the same features. So fun fact, when I went live on YouTube a few weeks ago for the iPhone 16 launch event, I had multiple people in the live stream comments asking me what camera was I using? They were asking if it was the iPhone using continuity camera. There was a specific comment that said that. And no, I couldn't say it at the time, but no, that camera was the Link 2C. And the reason the quality is so good is because it has a half inch sensor with HDR and it can shoot in 4K 30 FPS. It also has excellent phase detection autofocus. So when you hold something up to the camera, it'll like snap into focus. It's really nice. Okay, so talk is cheap. Let's see how this webcam actually looks compared to the M3 MacBook Air, the latest MacBook Air at the time of recording this. And you can see I'm in decent lighting right now. It's not good. It's not terrible. It's just decent lighting, you know, average lighting that you may take a FaceTime call on. So we're trying to see which one looks and sounds better. And here's what we look like in a lower light situation. It's not super low light. We have a little bit of light in front of us and a little bit of light to the left of us, but it's not great lighting. It's not terrible lighting, but terrible lighting, but we're just trying to see which one performs better. We're in a pretty well lit environment right now. We have lights in front and behind us and overhead. So you can see there's a little bit of flaring on the lights and take a look at the flares up there from the lighting. It does not look great at all. And here's what the Insta360 Link 2 and 2C looks like in low light. So let's see how that compares to the MacBook. And here's what that low light performance looks like on the M3 MacBook Air. The same lighting conditions, the same position. So yes, the video quality is amazing and it's likely near the top of its class for this type of webcam. However, to me, I need more than just video quality if I'm going to spend $150 to $200 on a webcam, which yes, the price has reduced by the way since the original Link 2, which is nice. But yeah, I'm going to need more than just video quality. I need good portability. I need good software, which is a major key. And I need good just overall functionality. And thankfully, Insta360 has knocked it out of the park in most of those areas, not all but most. So the webcam itself looks far and away better than the original Link webcam. It looks sleek and modern, and it also attaches magnetically to the mount, which fits perfectly on my studio display and also on my MacBook Air. And since it attaches magnetically and the USB-C cord isn't permanently attached, like to the back, I can easily take this with me on the go if necessary. And that can be key if you plan on making videos or going live while on the go, because both of these models can even switch over to a portrait mode for your Instagram Reels and and your TikToks. But by far the biggest double-edged sword with the Insta360 Link 2 and 2C is the software because it's great. Like it makes this webcam the, the main reason I'm going to keep using this webcam for a very long time, but it also is not perfect. There are some issues that just really annoy me. So we'll talk about those downsides in a moment, but let's first take a look at everything this webcam can do because you can use the webcam just plugged in. It'll work right away as a webcam, but you'll want to download the free link controller app to access all of the features. So the link Two has a built-in gimbal with AI tracking, which will not only move around to track your face, but it can also track groups of people to keep them in a free frame and you can even set boundaries for where the tracking starts and stops. And these AI tracking features are basically just like a better version of Apple's center stage feature, which I thought was great until I used this webcam. You can enable and disable the tracking with a simple hand gesture along with another hand gesture for zooming in and zooming out. There's also a desk view mode, which will show you a top down shot. So the link to will physically move down and the 2C you will have to kind of move it down and the software will do the rest. So this can be cool for some top down shots, but it 
doesn't work great on my desk setup. Now here's a feature that I will never use, but it might be a game changer for professors, instructors, or just anybody who teaches on a whiteboard. There's a whiteboard mode. So basically you get these recognition markers in the box of the link and you put these on the whiteboard and then you throw up the peace sign as the gesture and that will trigger whiteboard mode. And this will auto enhance the whiteboard to appear more clean, clear, and always keep the whiteboard in focus even when you walk in front of it or walk away. So that is awesome. Now here's something I'm really curious to see and I'm gonna have you guys help me out here. So Insta360 did put a microphone inside of the Link 2 and 2C. Now I'm not sure if you're ever gonna use a built-in webcams microphone, but I wanted to see how it compares to the MacBook. Okay, so first we're testing out the voice focus mode and this is supposed to enhance the clarity of your voice when there's background noise present. So I currently have a robot vacuum going off to the left of me. It's about 10 feet away right now. So we're trying to see if we can hear that background sound. I know the MacBook does a great job at canceling out background noise as well. So it'll be interesting to see which one sounds better. And then inside of the application, we have a few other little features and settings in here. So the view tab, this allows you to rotate the camera with this little digital joystick. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, and then you have your presets down here. And then below that, we have tracking settings. So this is where you can choose the AI zoom. You can choose your framing method, whether that be framing your head, half your body or your whole body and the effects tab you can adjust the exposure the white balance the temperature HDR and many other adjustments that you probably won't touch but they're nice to have there's also some filters down there that are pre-made I enjoy using the daylight one it looks pretty good and you can even add a green screen like background using their virtual camera feature so this is similar to what we saw on Mac OS Sequoia uh, as a built-in feature but you can get options like background blur bokeh and different environments so it is a little bit different from Apple with those features there. Now also on the more tab over here, we have our gesture controls, some other toggles, and then the audio modes. And then down in the bottom tray, we have all of our main toggles for our main features like AI tracking, our whiteboard mode, desk view mode, and all that. Oh, and there's also a built-in privacy mode where the Link 2 will physically angle itself down after 10 seconds of inactivity. And for the Link 2C, there's a privacy switch that you can use to close up the lens. And by the way, I do wanna hit on continuity camera a little bit further because I know we cannot really talk about a webcam in 2024 without bringing up Apple's continuity camera which is their built-in feature where you can use your iPhone as your webcam and that's great like that's a great makeshift solution that's a great temporary solution but it's far from a permanent solution if you get a phone call or if you need to respond to a message or a notification you can't do that if you're using your iPhone as a webcam without taking it off and losing your video feed and plus you have to worry about battery life on your iPhone like if it dies you're out of luck and you know you have to worry about propping it upright. You have to have that little mount that goes on and you have to prop it upright. And if you don't have that mount, then you're just gonna have to kind of hold it or put it on some type of tripod or something. I just love having a stationary webcam that I can always count on, always being there, and I don't need to do anything else to set it up. The only real downsides with the Link 2 and Link 2C are just software related. And these are hopefully going to get fixed in the future, but things like the false triggers when I wave, you know, I don't like how that automatically disables the AI tracking sometimes, not every time, but a lot of times it does. So sometimes I'll just have to wave real quick and then put my hand down so it doesn't trigger. So that and also the micro adjustments when you get in frame and then you start moving around or you slouch down or you just move a little bit and it will, you know, adjust that camera kind of like how center stage does on Apple. So it's not just Insta360, Apple's does it as well. I'm just not a fan of that. So sometimes I will have to turn that off if I'm sitting stationary. But really, those are the only negatives I could find after using these webcams for about a month now, a little over a month now. So if you're looking to buy a Link 2 or 2C, which one should you buy? Like which one is for what type of person? So I would say that the Link 2C is going to be, that's the more compact and cheaper version. But again, same video quality, same audio quality. I think that's gonna be for somebody who takes multiple video calls a month and they might travel a lot. So if you travel a lot, this is gonna be the one for you because if you have a laptop, if you're using a webcam on a laptop, you could always move the laptop around. You don't really need a you know gimbal to move the camera for you. Like you might want it and that's fine. It's only $50 more, but still, I just think that if you're trying to keep costs in mind, you might want to get the Link 2C if you're somebody who travels a lot and you're always on a laptop. And really the Link 2C is for anybody. Like I can't really cater it to a specific type of person. Now with the Link 2 on the other hand, I can. So I think for content creators, I think for educators or professors, like it's a no brainer to get the Link 2 over the 2C because you have that gimbal, you have all those crazy features with the gimbal that you can get, especially when it comes to, you know, the whiteboard mode. You wanna be able to have that, especially if you're far away from the webcam when you're demonstrating something on a whiteboard. So so the link to makes a lot of sense there and also it makes a lot of sense if you have
have a permanent stationary desk since you won't be able to pick up and move the monitor like you can a laptop to get a different view so you might need that gimbal in that case and so i think that if you're at a stationary desk and you take multiple calls a month and you want the best video quality the link 2 is going to be for you so those are my thoughts on the link 2 and the link 2c so i will be using the link 2 on top of my studio display for every future live stream every future video call every future facetime like that is my go-to camera now on my studio display my main desk setup meanwhile the link 2c will be coming with me anywhere i go when i travel especially if i know i have a video call planned ahead of time anyways if you enjoyed this review and you're interested in picking up a link 2 or link 2c i would appreciate if you use my link down in the description below if i helped you make that purchasing a decision let me know your thoughts down below are you going to continue using continuity camera on your iphone or are you going to switch over to a more permanent solution for your video calls let me know i'm really curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below but anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you soon